This is a video to accompany the pincushion flower or scabiosa. And um, this, what's quite exciting and unique about this design is that it's really, although it's a flower, it's all about the foliage and different textures um, that you create when you're working in that main base color. And then really it's your choice as to how you want to customize the top in terms of how you depict this flower at what stage of bloom. And what I mean by all of that is um, the pin um, cushion flower basically has a really beautiful um, closed bud head, um, which is a bit that I really love, is this first stage before um, the small individual buds actually erupt. So that's why I've captured all of the um, texture of the top and the sepals that go around the edge. And what you're going to be making is the seed head separately. Then you're going to be making a ring of all of those sepals that you'll then sew on together before you then going on um, to do the fronds around the edges of the leaves. So once you've completed this section, uh, which is what I'm just about to put together now, so you've got that technique, then you decide how you want to add these small petals on around the edge to show it at different stages. So this seed head here is um, erupting into bloom and you can see this one's doing it from the middle. So these ones have gone first. But what's actually quite exciting about this flower and you see it in your garden is it doesn't do it necessarily from the center outwards and it doesn't necessarily do it in one go. So what you tend to end up with um, is one or two in one little section and then they gradually extra ones burst until the whole flower head is formed like this then once that flower's bloomed they fade back again and once they go over this is actually what you're left with is a seed head that looks like this so so many different stages um, to this flower all equally as attractive it's up to you to decide how you want to depict your flower in terms of how many petals you put on at the end but first, let's um, talk a little bit about the sewing up and the finishing. I'm also going to do a little bit of the techniques on the arm so you can see that. So um, when it comes to adding these fronds around the edges of the arms, what you're actually doing is you've crocheted these two pieces. You don't stuff them and you gather one end. And then you're actually crocheting these fronds downwards. So I've done my first one, which is my chain eight. Then I've done my chain nine. Then I'm going to do my chain 10 here. Turn and work back down this chain. And then what you do is you miss one, two, three, four rounds, and then you slip stitch into that gap between the two rounds like that. Then once you've crocheted all the fronds in place, just to neaten it up and make these sit slightly more flat, um, what I would then recommend doing is um, breaking your yarn and then going back to where you began and then just slip stitching into the edge all the way around. And what that means is you'll be going into these half stitches here as you do your first side, because they're those ones that you will have already worked. So that's the second half of your chain effectively that's been left behind. So slip stitch right the way around the edge. And then on the other side, so on the return side, back towards the um, main arm, go right the way through the whole stitch. And that will just give you a lovely, neat finish on the edge of these leaves. So the reason why I've made the arm separate um, before I sew it up is because that means that you don't need to worry about right side and wrong side until you come to sew it on. So when you're actually going to be sewing these arms onto your flower, make sure that they are right side facing. So that means you'll be able to see all your Vs around the edges of your fronds facing upwards. So you'll sew those two into position, um, right side facing upwards on either side. But let's now talk about, I guess, the features that are unique um, to this flower. So one thing I would strongly advise is to sew your eyes on first. Um, before you actually start to place the head, just because this will make it a little bit easier to decide the character that you want to share on your plant. Now I've sewn this one with a slightly, I would describe it as shy or bashful appearance because I've put this quite low across the head. So I've got my eyes in place. And then what I'm going to do is bring this down 
and play with the position of this before I then move to sewing the seed head on the top because you might find you enjoy it being at a slight angle. It does not need to be straight um, at all. And you can, if you've got those eyes on first, you can actually bring it as low as you want it to be. So it could be really nice and low like that. And then your seed head just acts like a little bit of a beret um, that you sew on at the end before we then work the petals. So with this one, I think I'm gonna pull it nice and low like that. Position that where you want it to be and then use your ends to fix that in place. In fact, just to talk through this bit before I finally sew it on, what you'll have done is you'll have done your long chain and you've done these triangles off that chain, you then actually slip stitch all the way around the edge of these as well in exactly the same way that I've just shown you there on the arm. But what you then do is you break your yarn and you actually double crochet onto the inside too. And that just gives you a really nice, neat edge that you started from as well. So you've turned it around and you've double crocheted into your starting chain as well. And that way you'll get this lovely, neat edge. So sew that into place by stitching all the way around the outside and then you can sew your seed head on top. So then you can just position that on top and sew that in, bringing it down slightly onto that line. So you'd sew it into position like that. Right, then it comes to adding petals. So when it comes to adding petals, um, it really is your choice on how many you would like to do. But let me show you how easy it is to work the individual ones. So I would recommend if you just want to do a ring so it's nice and even, to put them right the way around the edge. So um, just put your hook in where you'd like to put the first one. Chain eight. And then what you're going to do is treble, you're going to miss one, two, and actually treble three into this stitch here. Then treble two into the one beneath it. Then half treble two, and that isn't into the same stitch that time, so it's one there. One there. And then double crochet into your last one and then just slip stitch back into the stitch that you came from. So that is one individual petal. Now you can work them completely individually if you want to. So you could break yarn, sew in those ends together and put them on um, as you wish. But if you're not a person that enjoys sewing in ends, what you can do as an alternative is actually traverse in between them if you wanted to. And what I mean by that is you would crochet a petal slip stitch back in, but this time slip stitch across. So slip stitch traverse by going in and around a stitch and probably spread them out by at least two stitches. So I'd slip stitch two or three stitches away from your previous one. And then you can just go straight into doing your next one. So if you want to really go for a fully um, erupted flower effect, you can actually cover the whole of the seed head by just traversing in and around the bobbles. I would leave your bobbles in between them so that you get this lovely effect of it erupting with the bobbles underneath. Um, so traverse around them, um, leaving the bobbles nice and free. So carry on like that, covering the whole of the flower head if you wish to, or just head around the outside if you just like to go for a ring that sits around the edge. <laughs> 